Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Blessings to you all on tonight. Welcome to a night of the prophetic. Amen. With Apostle Carmen Haywood, I bring you all greetings in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, yes, yes. We are here tonight. Amen. We are here tonight. Glory to God to pray in the realm of the spirit. We are here tonight. Glory to God to put the devil on flight. Hallelujah. We are here on tonight. Glory to God to give God the praise that is due unto his name. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Once again, I bring you all greetings in Jesus name. We got YouTube, we got Instagram, and we have Facebook live right in the middle. Glory to God. This is a night of the prophetic with yours truly, Apostle Carmen Haywood. And I am excited on tonight, but I'm excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm excited tonight. There is a word from God, but I'm excited about the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I give God praise. Hallelujah. In the beginning, and I'm going to praise him in the end as well, because how many of you know he's alpha and omega? Glory to God. Jesus is the beginning and he is the end. Glory. Hallelujah. So what that means, people of God, is that he's in the beginning of your situation and he's at the end of your situation. Come on here. Hallelujah. He's in the beginning while you're going through. Glory to God. And he's at the end when you get the victory. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout he's Alpha and Omega. Come on. Somebody shout he's the beginning and the end. Glory to God. Nothing goes past God. So be encouraged on tonight. Hallelujah. As you all are tuned, are time are chiming in. As you all are tuning in on tonight, I want to say welcome to a night of the prophetic. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is a rich word. Amen. From God on tonight. And if you hear what thus saith the Lord, then you will be blessed. Amen. If you hear what God is saying unto you, you will be blessed. Amen. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. Amen. And we are the church. Come on. Can somebody write that in the comments as we're getting ready to get started on tonight. I am the church. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are the church. Glory to God. And so God, amen, has a word that he wants to speak to his people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's a rich word now. Amen. This word is going to bring many of you out. Glory to God. For those of you that want to come out, God bless each and every one of you. Blessings, brother Malachi. Blessings to you, sister Latanya. Amen. Those of you that have greeted me, God bless you. Amen. I believe it was minister... I'm so sorry. Okay, Minister DeVale, that's Sister Carol. Yes, God bless you on tonight. Each and every one of you that has greeted me, amen. Sister Kamaya, God bless you, sweetheart. I am praying for you as well. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's a Friday night. Amen. We're getting ready to go into Saturday, but it's still Friday night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And you know what? Some of you could be doing so many other things on a Friday night, but you're probably in the comfort of your home. Praise God. Amen. Or if you are out, I want I want to encourage you to be very careful. Amen. While you're out in these streets. Amen. Um, late at night. Late at night. Amen. So those of you that are that are listening to me, you're probably in the comfort of your home. And so I want you to grab your Bibles. I want you to turn to the book of James. We're going to come from the book of James tonight, chapter two. Truly, there is a word from God. Would you be so kind to share this broadcast? Would you be so kind to just tag a few people's names in the broadcast? Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Sharing is caring. Amen. Sharing is caring. I think that's a little bit better. There we go. That's a little better angle right there. Yes, yeah, sharing is caring. All right. God bless you, Sister Tarsha, which I know is Tanya. Amen. I believe it's Tanya. God bless you on tonight. Arnisha, I see you coming in on tonight. We got YouTube, Instagram live, and then we have Facebook live in the middle. I am excited. I really am. But I want to say this um, on tonight, and I know this is confirmation for some of you that have that have tuned that have tuned in early. As I was getting ready to log on, I had so much warfare. One device was glitching. I couldn't even pull up what I needed to pull up on that device, and the other device was acting up. And so that was an indication that God is getting ready to do something special on tonight. Amen. And so I didn't become weary. <clears throat> I just kept on pressing my way, and I began to pray. I even put it in our ministry group, and I asked that the ministry begin to pray. Amen. Because there were technical difficulties. What am I saying? You cannot give in when opposition is coming your way. I'm going to say that one more time. You cannot give in to the enemy when opposition is coming your way. Do you hear me? 
Glory to God. You have to learn how to press your way in the midst of adversity. You have to learn how to press your way in the midst of the enemy fighting you. I don't know who I'm talking to right here, but God began to speak to me. And he said, daughter, as I was logging on, he said, there are going to be many who are, who are dealing with the spirit of heaviness. And I said, yes, father. He began to speak to me as I was logging on. The phones began to act up. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, the phones were working good. And that's when God began to speak to me. He said, the spirit of heaviness is upon many of my people on tonight. Yes, yes, yes. So God is going to lift that spirit of heaviness that is upon some of you. And listen, it's not over until God says it's over. Do you hear me? It's not over until God says it's over. And I don't know who you are tonight, but the Lord said many are going to join tonight that are dealing with the spirit of heaviness. And I began to say, yes, Lord, Tasha. Okay. I began to say, yes, Lord. And as I began to say, yes, Lord, the Lord began to speak to me again, Sister Kamaya. He said, not only do you bind the works of the enemy concerning my people that are, that are heavy tonight. He said, this is what I need you to do. Glory to God. He began to give me instruction because we're going to talk about faith tonight. But God gave me instruction. He said, daughter, I want you to pray. He said, and as you begin to pray, I want you to bind the works of the enemy that is coming against the mindset of my people. For there are many that are not happy right now. You're in a new year and you're like, okay, it's a new year, but nothing has changed. Come on. I know I'm on your street tonight. Stay right. Stay right there. It's a new year, but nothing has changed. If that's you, I want you to hit those hearts tonight because I'm going to pray for you. If that's you tonight, I'm going to pray for you. Come on, we're going to be real so that you can get free. Come on. If that's you tonight, I want that. Okay, I see somebody hitting them hearts. I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. Yes, the Lord, the Lord, he revealed it to me and it came upon me so heavy. I was like, wow. You know, I said, Lord, I said, well, I'm not, Sister Carol says, right. I said, I am not, I said, Lord, I'm not heavy. I said, I, I'm not dealing with the spirit of heaviness. He says, yes, you're not dealing with it. He said, but my people are. And so sometimes as a prophet, then I don't know who needs to hear this. We have to be sensitive to the spirit of the Lord in such a way that we minister to those who need ministry because God spoke to me also, sister Debbie, he said, many are not going to make it. He says, so you have to be very sensitive what you say and what you release because it has to be a word to prepare them to stand before me. I don't think y'all hear me tonight. I don't think you hear me tonight. God spoke to me. He said, daughter, you have to be very sensitive and release my word in the right season at the right time because his soul's in the balance. And a lot of times as prophets and even as pastors, we talked about passive pastors the, the last Facebook Live. And I began to tell the people, I'm not a passive pastor. What does that mean? I don't have a one, two, three message for you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't have a one, two, three message for you. I don't, I don't have a message that you might be used to hearing from your pastor or, you know, a, a cliche, cliche message. You know, you take two steps and God's going to take three. I don't have a message like that. Never have. And I don't think I will. So I'm not a passive pastor. Amen. I am a true prophet of the Lord. I'm a prophet before I am a pastor. So what does that mean? Glory to God. As I'm ministering the word of the Lord and teaching God's word to his people, not just my church or not just my ministry, but those of you that join in that are a part of the body of Christ, hear me in the spirit. My responsibility is to hear from God concerning you. See, I can have a message that I have written out and I could break it down verbatim and I can just, you know, make it so beautiful and just so fluently, right? To the point to where you say, oh, that was an awesome message. Oh, pastor preached today. Pastor taught the word. But is it what you need to hear? Come on. Is, is it a right now word for your right now situation? Come on. So God began to speak to me. Amen. He said, daughter, I want you to pray. He said, then after you pray, he said, I want you to encourage my people and tell them this is the season. Listen, listen, many of you have crossed over and I know you're not happy. You're dealing with the spirit of heaviness, but God says, this is the season that you shall go from believing because it's one thing to believe. He said, now I want you to exemplify your faith to now where you start to receive. And I said, yes, Lord. And he took me back to a dream I had the other night. 
And in the dream, people of God, there was a prophet that I know, and he, he was sitting in a chair and he was talking to me in a dream. And sometimes God speaks to me like that. Sometimes God will speak directly to me. And then there are times that God will have another prophet that I know of that will, that will meet me in my dream, that will talk to me directly. When God does that, it is very, very important. It's a message that, glory to God, when I wake up, it's so real. I see you hitting those um, hearts, Sister Latoya. It's so real, Sister Sophia, to the point to where it shakes me up. So this prophet came to me and he was sitting in a chair and came to me in my dream. God bless you. God bless you. I'm Geraldine. God bless you on tonight. Listen, welcome, welcome, welcome to a night of the prophetic. And so the prophet came to me and this is what he spoke to me. Glory to God. He said, tell, he said, God said, tell his people that they shall no longer want to become something, but now is the time to become it. Just like that. Just like that. And when I woke up from the dream, I said, I said, wait a minute, God. I said, can you, can you break that down for me? He said, daughter, you know what it's like when you desire something. Or you desire to be something. Or you desire to have something. Right? He said it's one thing to, to want to become that. But then he said that it's another thing when you become it. And so God spoke to me. He said there's a transition that needs to take place with my people. And that transition can only happen by way of the spirit. I see you hitting those hearts, daughter Asia. Amen. Yes, yes. And that's what he told me. He spoke directly to me. He said, and many of my people are not in a season of manifestation because they're in the place of wanting to become something, but not walking by faith. Hallelujah. To be able to be what it is that they're asking God for. See, see, there's one thing, glory to God, you, you know, let, let me give a natural example. We're going to tie it into the spirit. I want to help about seven of you. That's like, okay, I hear you woman of God, but I'm not really getting it. Let me help you right here. You know how, when you were, when you were growing up, you were a child and you know, you went to the doctor's office and you admired the doctor, right? You admired the, the way that the doctor, you know, came in the room and, you know, said the nurse will be coming in and, you know, the nurse came in and took your blood pressure and, you know, gave you the needle that you need, whatever your visit consisted of. So when you were a child, you admired the doctor. You admired the fact that they came in with the stethoscope and listened to your heart and you was like, oh, wow, I want to be a doctor. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> I'm going somewhere in the Holy Ghost. And you know how when you were a child, you're like, I want to be a doctor. I, I want a stethoscope. So when it was Christmas time, you know, because your parents knew that you wanted to be a doctor, what did they buy you? They bought you the kit. Come on, they, they got you the doctor's hat. Come on, they got you the stethoscope. And, you know, they got you all the equipment that you needed, even as a child. You might have been five. You might have been 10. You might have been, um, uh, you know, 12 or whatever. I don't know. Right? Y'all, You caught it? Okay. In the natural, that's what you wanted to be. Now, as you got older, you realized, okay, wait a minute. In order for me to be a doctor, that means I have to do great in school. In my elementary and in my high schooling and in my, you know, after high school. And, you know, I have to do great in school, right? So you realize what it's going to take. God bless you, Sister KD. You realize what it's going to take in order to be that doctor. Now, here's the catch. Many people, when they realize what it's going to take to become that doctor, you got eight years of this school and four years of this school. So you got 12 years of education in order for you to be this doctor that you admired when you were young. Now, it's one thing wanting to become that and it's another thing becoming it. Come on, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Now, that's what God is saying even concerning his people. Some of you have a calling on your life. Let's break this word down real quick and we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Hallelujah. You have a calling on your life and you believe that you know what that consists of. You might look at your pastor. You might look at former pastors that you sat under. You might look at the bishop. You might look at the apostle. You might look, you know, at those that are in ministry and say, okay, that's what it's going to take for me to get to that place. Can I tell you as God's servant? Not so. Not so. Not so. Just like that doctor, hallelujah, had sleepless nights. Come on, they making good money now. They're a doctor. They went through 12 years and, and 15 years of schooling and 16 years of schooling. You see them as a doctor when you are a patient, but you have no idea the process. You have no idea how many student loans they had to take out. Come on. You have no idea, glory to God, how many doors were slammed in their face. How many schools said no. Come on here. Because just because you want to be something doesn't mean that the doors are going to automatically open. Come on here. Hallelujah. What that means is you have to find, glory to God, the favor of the Lord concerning what it is that he told you to do. Now, did you hear me? You got to find the favor. Uh-oh. We're going somewhere tonight. We're we going somewhere tonight. Because, it, listen, it's going to take more than your money. Hallelujah. To get to where it is that you're trying to go to. You need the favor of God. You need faith in God. Come on. Holy Ghost is teaching already. Listen. Hallelujah. You don't just need a dream. Glory to God. You need a plan. And after you get a plan, God is going to breathe upon it and give you favor. See, this is why, God bless you, Brother Chris Smith. This is why many people accomplish their dreams and they accomplish their goals. Hallelujah. And they're very successful because number one, they put God first. And number two, they had a plan. Because I promise you that doctor... Let me tell you something. He might be a doctor. She might be a doctor now, but somebody heard their vision. Somebody, whether it was their parent, whether it was grandma, whether it was auntie, whether it was uncle, right, Denise? Amen. As a child, they were saying, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a nurse. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a mechanic. I want to be a beautician. I want to be this. I want to be that. And it took somebody. Come on here. Hearing the vision. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody's being strengthened right here. Listen, it took somebody hearing the vision and said, you know what? You can do it. Or better yet, <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. Not just you can do it, but let me help you get to that place. See, that's favor. Come on here. That's favor. And see, you need the right people. God bless you, Prophet Derek, you and your, be your beautiful wife. God bless you both. You need the favor of God. Hallelujah. To rest upon your vision. Let me tell you something. If you don't have God's favor, it's not going to happen. God bless you, Apostle Lorenzo, my brother. Blessings to you on today. And happy, happy, blessed new year, Apostle. Glory to God. Yes, you need the favor of God. See, see, let me, let me help about five of you. Money is great, but if you don't have favor, you have nothing. I see people work three jobs. I see people work five jobs, literally, and don't get no sleep. Come on here. They got a lot of money, and guess what? They don't even have time to spend it. Come on here. So, so they're miserable in one area, and they're not able to fulfill what God has called them to do. So they're not complete. Come on, somebody. They are, they are not whole. Come on here. Hallelujah. Only a person that is whole can seek the face of God for favor. Because they understand. I see you hitting those hearts, Sister Latanya. They understand that, guess what? My money can't do it. Come on, my slick talk can't do it. Come on, because some of y'all think y'all can talk your way out of stuff. Or you think you can talk your way into stuff. The truth of the matter is you need the favor of God. But it comes by faith. It, it comes by faith. Hallelujah. I teach in this ministry, everything that you're going to receive is by faith. It takes faith to preach. It takes faith to sing the songs of Zion. Come on, praise team. Whoever's on the praise team. Listen, it takes faith to give. Come on here. It takes faith in God to do everything. It takes faith in God to teach his word. Come on, because if I don't have faith in God, I can't, I can't explain anything to you. Come on. If I don't believe God first. 
Hallelujah. I can't tell you how great he is. And you know, I, I, it's, it's impossible. Come on. So it takes faith to do everything, but it even takes faith to get to a place of favor in God. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Ghost is teaching already. Listen. So God says, now my people have to go from wanting to become it to now becoming it. See, we have crossed over into 2023. And many of you have dreams and you have visions. Come on. Many of you, God has spoken to you years ago. And this is the year of manifestation. Do you hear me? This is the year, glory to God, where God is going to open the door of favor for you to become that nurse, to become that doctor. Come on, to become that pastor. Amen. Whatever it is, hey, Shatanda Baha, I feel a mighty release right here. Glory to God. You're going to walk in the promise now. You're going to walk in manifestation now, Prophet Derek. Hallelujah. Because there's people that need you. They need to hear your voice, not just on social media. Woo. Hallelujah. Some of you, God is going to give an edifice. God is going to give you a building. Come on. Some of you want to be beauticians. You want to be makeup artists. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on. Y'all got to share this broadcast because there's some people on your timeline that needs this word of encouragement. I can't get to them because I don't know them, but you know them. So share the broadcast. Come on. Hallelujah. This is Shatanda Baha. Yes, Lord, I hear you. This is the season. This is the time. Glory to God, where God is going to open major doors for you. Amen. Come on. But you can't look back, people of God. You can't look to the left. You can't look to the right. You can't worry about who wasn't there for you. You can't. Hey, glory. You got to stop complaining. Amen. About what did not work for you. This is the time to, hallelujah, stop just wanting to become something and now becoming it. Come on. It's time to walk. Hey, hallelujah in divine favor. Do you hear me? Hallelujah. It's time, glory to God, to shake off the heaviness and shake off the weariness. The Bible says, be not weary. Hallelujah. And well doing for in due season. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the fire of God tonight. He said, in due season, you shall reap. Hey, glory. Lift your hands and give God praise. He says, you shall reap if you don't faint. Well, apostle, you don't know what I'm going through. Prophet, you don't understand the warfare. Oh, I do understand. Glory to God. I understand the warfare more than you think I do. Hallelujah, because I've been there. Glory to God. I've done that already. I have wrestled with the devil. Do you hear me, Jacob? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I've been in the position that you are in right now, but I refuse to let the angel go until he blessed me. Woo, hallelujah. Jacob wrestled with the angel. Hey, Shatan Baha. He wrestled with the angel. He said, wait a minute, you got my blessing. So I'm not gonna let you go. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm not gonna let you go until you bless me. Until you favor me. That's what that means. That's the revelation. Hallelujah. Jacob said, wait a minute, hold on now. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I feel heaven opening up for us on tonight because somebody needs this encouragement. You shall no longer look back. You shall no longer be discouraged, but you shall be encouraged tonight. Hallelujah. To know that God is going to give you favor. Hey, hallelujah. And favor comes from heaven. Favor comes from God. You can't buy favor. Come on, somebody. You can't even pray for favor. Come on, somebody. You got to walk in obedience to God and he will release his favor upon you you look to the left there's favor you look to the right there's favor you look up there's favor you look down there's favor come on you look all around you and there's favor from God come on hallelujah hallelujah prophet Derek says amen you know why he say amen because he got his favor let me tell you how he got his favor i believe it's been a month or so amen and he got married come on let me let me break this thing down in the holy ghost amen for many of you to understand because there's some men that's on his live tonight but god is getting ready to give you your favor hallelujah when a man gets married when a man finds his wife he finds favor hey glory the bible says he that findeth a wife, hallelujah, hey, glory to God, finds favor with the Lord. Woo. 
Woo! Hallelujah. He obtains favor from God. Come on, women of God. Let me help you right here, ladies. You are the favor to that man. Come on here. That's why you can't give yourself to anybody. Woo! Hallelujah. There's a breaking in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, ladies, you cannot give yourself just to anybody because now you are his favor. Does he deserve it? Did, did, did God say he's the one? Woo, hallelujah. Come on. He said a good thing. He said my good thing. Come on here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Woo, hallelujah. I felt the breaking in the spirit right there. Now you're going to decide, ladies, who you're going to give yourself to. Just because he come to you and say, I want to marry you. Okay, whatever. Did, did God send you? Because there's a whole lot of people that want to marry me. Come on, it's a whole lot of, hey, shatan number high. When you know your value, when you know your worth. Come on, we're going to stay right here for 30 more seconds. Come on, somebody, because God has someone for you in this year, 2023. But you got to learn how to wait on him. Hey, because you are the favor to that man. Come on. So think about it. <laughs> if he bozo the clown, I'm getting in trouble. If he's Bozo the Clown, do you really think that you are a woman of favor? Hey, hallelujah, a woman of class and a woman of dignity and a woman of virtue. Come on here, you done kept yourself. Hey, Shatanda Baha'i, do you really think that God is going to give you over to Bozo the Clown? I don't think so. It don't work like that. Come on here. You fall in the hands of Bozo the Clown when you don't know your value. Jesus, have mercy. You fall in the hands of Bozo the Clown when you don't really understand who you are in the kingdom. My God. Hallelujah. When you don't understand that you are a precious jewel. You are a diamond in the rough. Who am I encouraging on tonight? Hallelujah. So that means you got to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Oh, I feel like taking a sprint around my house. Hallelujah. Hey, Shatan Baha. Come on, Nasha. Glory to God. Be of good courage. And the Lord shall strengthen your heart. He says, wait, I say again on the Lord. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you are precious. Hallelujah. You are a jewel. Do you hear me? You are his favor. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. And when you see yourself as such, you'll make better decisions. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on. That don't mean he coming to you speaking in tongues and all of that stuff. Because he might be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And he might not want to speak in no tongues yet. Because he might just be mesmerized by your beauty. Oh, come on here. Men are visual. Let me just teach for about two minutes. Men are visual. So what that means is, yes, he's attracted to your outer. But a man of God is going to be attracted to your inward. Which is where your spirit is. Hey, come on, Geraldine. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. A man is attracted to the outer because he's, he's visual. Men are visual. That's why they stare at you. That's why they look at you. And you sitting there talking about, why are you looking at me? He's look. hey, shatan da baha. Men are visual. Come on. So they, they like, if they like what they see, they like what they see. But a man of God is going to say, wait a minute. The outer is nice, but I, the, the, listen, the inside, I, I can't, I can't go for that. Come on here. When, when it's not right on the inside. Come on, but a man of God, when he's looking for his wife, come on, Prophet Derek, I know I'm all in your testimony, because you say, look, my wife is beautiful on the inside and outside. Come on, somebody. And that's when a man of God is looking. I ain't talking about Bozo the Clown. Come on, y'all. Hey, come on. Bozo the Clown was left in 2022. <laughs> Come on here. Some of you going to get engaged this year. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. Some of you going to meet him and he's going to meet you. Come on. Glory to God. And after you meet, glory to God, then God is going to do what's necessary to be done. And then you're going to get married. 2024, some of you going to get married. Some of you going to get married at the end of this year because some, some of these men that's coming, they ain't playing no games. Come on. They like, wait a minute. I got a wife. Huh? Hold on. Hold on. I, I know it's something good. Hey, I'm talking about a real man of God. I ain't talking about these fly by nights. Come on. I ain't talking about these men that's trying to lay something and get laid. Come on here. See, now the spiritual mother in me is coming out. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. 
Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's some men that are watching. It's some men that are waiting. Hallelujah. But you got to ask God to keep you. Glory to God. And ask God to keep your body. Hallelujah. Because you are the favor of God. For that man, do you hear me? Hallelujah. You are his favor. And what that means is what he could not get in his singleness. Because you're his wife. Hey, glory to God. He going to be able to get it. Catch the revelation. Hallelujah. Come on. There's some men of God that as they waited on God for their wife. They now have better lives. Come on, the house that they couldn't get in their singleness because they ain't have their favor. Come on, somebody. They didn't have their rib. They didn't have their wife in their singleness. They were not able to get it. Come on. But now, somebody shout now. KD said, I caught it. Come on here. Hallelujah. And so make sure, glory to God, that whoever approaches you this year, and I don't know who I'm talking to, but hear me in the Holy Ghost. Make sure that you consult God first. Don't be so impressed with the money. Because guess what? You are the favorite. Woo, come on, women of God. Hallelujah. And what you ask the Father for, he's going to give it unto you. That's why you're his favor. Come on. And this is why, yes, Lord, I hear you. We're going to teach a little bit. Amen. Because when the husband comes, when the man of God comes, listen to the revelation. He's coming with a vision. And the Bible says in the Old Testament that you are the help me. So the man is coming with a vision. He ain't got no vision. He ain't the one. Hey, glory be to God. Do you hear me? Because how are you going to, oh, let me calm down. Let me, let me. That was heavy right there, KD. What, what? Oh, Jesus. That right there, that just dropped like a bomb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let, let me just slow down for just a little bit right here because the fire of God is all on this broadcast. Woo, hallelujah. Listen. In the Old Testament, come on, in Genesis, it says, listen, Shatanda Baha, hallelujah, Eve, glory to God, was Adam's help me. What does that mean? God gave a job to Adam in the garden, and he told him, he said, Adam, I want you to tend to the garden. So if he coming and he ain't got no job, he ain't the one. Because God gave Adam the first job in the Old Testament, in Genesis. So he ain't got no job, he don't need you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You talking about, I'm just going to wait for him to get a job. He, no, he ain't going to get a job because he ain't the one. Let, let Bozo stay where he's at. Holy Ghost. Listen, now he might not be punching somebody's clock. Now, you know, you got some men that got businesses, right, Brother Chris Smith? Come on, you got businesses. That's a difference. You ain't a Bozo. Come on, if you got multiple businesses, because that means you're tapping into multiple streams of income. So that, that means your tax bracket is higher than the average man. Now, I'm just saying. All right? So I'm not talking about if he... Now, now, you know, some men, they don't punch a clock. They got businesses. So listen, he got businesses. He's all right. But I'm, I'm talking about the one that ain't even punching the clock. I'm talking about a man that ain't even trying to work. He ain't trying to do nothing. But get on your everlasting nerves. No, he ain't the one. Because he's a headache. Hey, Shatan Baha. Come on here. And a man that's a headache can't do nothing for you, ladies. But get on your everlasting nerves. Leave that in 2022. I don't even know how we got here. I don't even know how we got here, but we're here now. Come on, Sister KD says, laugh out loud. Come on, I must be on somebody's street. Come on, leave that in 2021. Leave that in 2022. He ain't trying to do nothing with himself. Then how you going to help him? Think about it, ladies. Think about it. Come on, you're his favor. How you going to help him? He ain't got no vision. He ain't going nowhere. He depending on you and riding your back. Come on here. You got to feed him. You got to cook. Hey, Shatanda Baha. You got to clothe him. Sound like a child to me. And some of y'all got kids. Woo. You better turn him over to his mama. If his mama's still alive. Oh, I'm getting in good trouble tonight. You better, and that's another thing. He a mama's boy. He can, oh, God, Jesus, you want me to say this? Lord, have mercy. He ain't even leave the nest yet. So how he going to build you and your kids a nest? Hey, Shatan Nabaha, come on here. He ain't even leave the nest yet. He ain't trying to leave mama because he know he need a, a, listen, when he cut up with you and try to knock your head off and abuse you and drag you and, uh-oh, who am I talking to? Come on, somebody. He got to have a house to go back to so he keeps the door open with mama. You think it's cute that he stayed with his mom? Come 
Come on, somebody. It, that's not cute. Woo. Come on, he has no vision. So a man without a vision, you can't even help him. See, women of God, you, hey, you are the help me to that man. Come on. Come on. Come on. And, and so, yes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost is speaking tonight. It's all truth. Come on. And somebody's getting set free right here. Think about it. Just think about it for a minute. Come on, if you are the help me to that man, you are his favor. You're coming with the blessing of the Lord because you are the blessing to him. So you got to look at, you got to look at it like this. I'm the jackpot. I'm the bonus. Come on, I am the gift. Oh, I don't even know how we got here tonight. Come on here. I know the men loving it. Even the husbands that's on here. Y'all like, come on, prophetess, keep on talking because you're speaking good, woman of God. <laughs> that's because they got their rib. They got their good thing. So they know I'm telling the truth. But for the ladies that don't know, Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Because now that you have crossed over, stop, stop saying, I'm a be a wife. Come on here. Hallelujah. And start walking in the steps to become a wife. Woo. Hallelujah. So what that means is every man that wants to date you, who am I talking to? And want to take you out on a date. Why are you sleeping with them? If you're looking, who am I talking to tonight? If you're looking, it's three. The Lord said it's three of you. You ain't even got to hit those hearts because I, I don't want you to be embarrassed tonight. If Holy Spirit is speaking to you, it's all right. Amen. Just because a man takes you out on a date does not mean you have to sleep with him. If you are, who am I talking to right here? If you are waiting for a husband, you are waiting to become someone's wife and you are looking for a husband. Why are you sleeping with a man that ain't even, don't even got no interest in you? Cause he brought you steak and potatoes. Cause he brought you filet mignon and gave you some lobster. No, you're supposed to have that queen. Woman of God, you're supposed to have that. Just because he pulled your chair out. Just because when he, oh, you talking about he's so nice. No, he's supposed to open your door. You come off the date, you like, girl, oh my goodness. You come call your girlfriend, oh my goodness. Girl, he brought me, he brought me lobster. He got me steak, the big steak, girl. I even went home and I got, I got some food in the refrigerator and he got me dessert with extra ice cream. For real, he was supposed to get you all of that. That's his time to impress you. Hello? He's a, hey, Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. If he going to be your husband, he got to give you a little something to be able to say, okay, this is how I'm going to treat you. How we get here tonight? This ain't even in my notes. This not in my notes, y'all. This ain't in my notes. This not my, these my notes right here. What I'm saying ain't in my notes. <sighs> Malachi says, speak. Come on here. He's supposed to wow you. Come on. You about to be his favor. He's supposed to treat you like the diamond that you are. He's supposed to value you. Now, if he's choking you and pulling on you the first couple times you see him, leave Bozo alone. Say, listen, you got too much aggression, sir. I'm a queen. Uh-uh. Wait a minute. Hold on. I, no, I'm a woman of God. You're not going to pull on me. You're not going to talk to me any kind of way. Come on, that's some of you. You let people talk to you any kind of way. Come on here. No, you. This it's a new year. You deserve, hallelujah, to be treated right. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Evangelist Arlene. For those of you that's being blessed, get your seed in the ground. Whatever the amount is, bless the Lord. If God is ministering to you, if he's pulling you out of some stuff, amen, that you could not come out of yourself. Hey, hallelujah. That's when you sow your seed. Amen. Come on. God is speaking. And I don't even know how we got here, but we're here tonight. You know why? Because God says now you have to stop wanting to be it. And now you have to be it. In other words, it's, it's a beautiful thing to always desire something and to, to admire something. And I hear God saying, even for the men that are watching, some of you desire to be elevated in the realm of the spirit. Go on the consecration. Amen. Go on the fast, man of God, so that God can elevate you. Hallelujah. In the realm of the spirit. Stop saying, I want to be, you know, um, uh, an anointed leader in the body of Christ. Stop saying God has called me to pastor. Amen. Stop saying God has called me to do this and God has called me to do that and start doing it. Amen. Come on. Find what it's going to take for you to get to that place. 
Come on. Which means you have to do your research. Holy Ghost is speaking to somebody. Come on. We have to now go from wanting to be to now becoming. God said this is the time of manifestation. Doors are getting ready to swing open for us. The favor of God is getting ready to hit us. Hallelujah. It's getting ready to hit the body of Christ. You're going to see people open businesses, amen, that didn't even have a college degree. Do you hear me? You're, you're about to see people say, oh, pastor, I got the keys to the suite. Oh, you did? Yeah, now I'm doing makeup and I'm doing eyelashes and I'm doing something that I always wanted to do. Come on here. You're going to, hey, Shatanda Baha, you're going to see the men, amen, that always wanted to drive trucks, amen, but, but didn't know how to get a CDL. Come on. Hallelujah. Then now the doors are getting ready to open. Amen. For, 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 yes, Lord, I hear you. For opportunities. Amen. For them to go ahead and get their CDL and to open up that truck and business. Come on. This is what God is. Shatanda Baha. This is what he's about to do for his people. He says, so now you have to change your language also. You have to change what you say out of your mouth. Come on. You got to speak those things that be not as though they were. Come on. Hallelujah. You got to start speaking it into existence. Who am I talking to? Come on. If God has called you as his minister, as his prophet, as his pastor, amen, as his teacher, as his evangelist, amen, the fivefold ministry. Now is the time, hallelujah, for you to start walking in your gifts. Now is the time for you to find the right leadership. Come on. Now, hey, Shatanda Baha. Now is the time for you to learn how to sit and to be poured into so that God can now bless you to be a blessing to others. Come on, many of you that's on this broadcast, you're getting ready to be a blessing to others because God is, hey, I hear you, Lord. Cynthia Marie, God is about to fill your cup and it's about to overflow. You're about to go from asking people for help to now being the help. Woo, who am I talking to? Many of you are about to go from asking for help to now being the help. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on. Come on. Some of you say, apostle, that's what I desire. How did you know to say that? I'm only saying what God has given me to say. Hallelujah, because this is your word tonight. Hallelujah, with your name on it. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. So receive the word of the Lord. Receive what God has for you. You will prosper this year. You will be in good health this year. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. She said, that truly is my desire. See that confirmation right there? Hallelujah. God hears our prayers. People of God, he sees your tears. Late at night, glory to God, when you cannot sleep and the tears, Crystal, are falling down your face. God sees the tears. And your tears are liquid prayers, which you cannot say, hey, glory to God, out of your mouth when you begin to cry. Hallelujah. The Bible says, hey, that God bottles up our tears and they are liquid prayers. They are prayers to God. Hallelujah. So, so, so don't think, and even men, men that, that cry, don't think, ah, uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That God does not see and God does not know. Hallelujah. He knows glory to God, everything concerning you. He knows hallelujah when you are weeping, but the Bible says weeping may endure for a night. I feel joy and I feel victory. Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And it's 1228. Somebody shout, it's morning time. Hey, hallelujah. You getting ready to cross over to breakthrough. Glory to God. Somebody shout, it's morning time. You ain't going to cry over that no more. Hallelujah. Hey, God says, I'm delivering you even now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some praise right there. Because some of you been weeping in your spirit. Hallelujah. You've been down in your spirit. But God says, even now, he's lifting you up. Oh, glory to God. And he's restoring back your joy. He's giving you back your peace. Um, hallelujah. He's regulating your mind. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus. Come on here. Hallelujah. Receive the joy of the Lord. Receive the peace of God again. Hallelujah. Receive what God has for you. Receive the strength of the Lord. Some of you felt weak before you got on this live and, and the enemy has been fighting you. Hallelujah. You've been weak in your body, but I hear the spirit of the Lord said, even now he is strengthening your body. He's strengthening your mind. Oh, you're going to dream again. Come on. Oh, sister Tony, hallelujah, you're going to dream again and you're going to see those dreams come to pass. Somebody write in the comments this year. Come on, somebody write in the comments this year. And as you're typing this year, I want you to say it this year. 
Come on, hallelujah. I want you to say it this year. I will have the house. I will have the car. My bank accounts will have money. Come on, somebody, because some of you got multiple bank accounts. Hallelujah. And you haven't been able to put money in the other account. Who am I talking to? Oh, glory to God. But this year, this year, oh, yes, this year. Hey, glory to God. I said this year, I prophesy this year will be your year. I prophesy that this year will be the year of manifestation for you. I prophesy that this year will be the year of fulfillment. I prophesy that this year will be the year of breakthrough. That as you break through, you will break forth. Woo, hallelujah. I feel the fire of God tonight. Hallelujah. You're getting ready to break forth. Hallelujah. What man said you couldn't do. Amen. What woman said you couldn't do last year and the year before that God is going to make it possible because he's going to release his favor upon you now to get it done. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Christina says, definitely me. Come on. You're going to go from, hey, I hear you, God. You're going to go from depending on people to now, amen, being that blessing to now where people can come to you and say, I need help. I need this, I need that. And you're going to be able to give it to them. Hallelujah. Many of you are going to go from being the, the lender. Amen. Hallelujah. From being the borrower to now the lender. Come on here. Hallelujah. At one time, you were the borrower. You were the one that was asking for this and asking for that. But this year, whoo, hallelujah. Somebody needs to sow a this year's seed. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. And I just saw 38. I don't know why I saw 38. Okay, I hear you, God. We're going to break it down. Yes, Lord. He just gave it to me. Amen. Hey, Shatan Nabaha, the seed of 38. I'm going to break it down. What he just spoke in my spirit. Yes, God, I hear you. Mm. My God, my God, my God, God done shifted me. Amen. We was going to go to James. Now we're going to go to the book of John. Yes, God, I hear you. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout this year. Come on. Somebody shout this year. Oh, yes. It's going to happen this year. Come on. I'm coming out this year. Hallelujah. I'm not going to struggle no more this year. Hallelujah is the year that I come out. Hey, hallelujah. This year. Woo, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Somebody shout this is the year. Mm. That I come out and I come out with the victory. Come on, Sister Ann. I believe you're here in North Carolina, Sister Ann. You need to come to our service. Hey, glory to God. The Lord has a miracle for you, Sister Ann. I don't know what you've been through. Glory to God for the last two years, Sister Ann. Amen. But I hear the spirit of the Lord. Hey, Shatan Baha. I hear you, God. Amen. Sister Ann Williams, are you here? Amen. In North Carolina, are you close to North Carolina? Glory to God. You may be another and amen that the Lord put in my spirit. Glory to God. But those of you that are in North Carolina, you need to come to our physical building. Amen. And get your miracle. Come on in the name of Jesus. It don't even have to be a revival. Come on. You could just come to the house of God. Amen. The Lord always works miracles in our services. Glory to God. Amen. Come to the house of the Lord. Amen. Every Sunday at 2 p.m. If one of the members can post the address so that somebody can screenshot it. If you're in North Carolina, come on. You need to get your healing and get your miracle in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory to God. The Lord just gave it to me 38 and this is why he gave it to me. Thank you. Holy spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I turned to it. Amen. And this page is actually ripped out in my Bible. The devil is a liar. Are we going to preach this word tonight? Yes, God. Are we going to preach this word tonight? Glory, glory, glory. Okay. All right. Ann Williams is another woman of God that has your first and last name. <laughs> That I'm connected to. Amen. She says I'm in Chicago, Illinois. Glory to God. Amen. I want you all to turn to John, John chapter 5. Amen. John chapter 5. All right. Yes. This is going to bless you. It's all going to tie in. Y'all stay with me. All right. Did you all share the broadcast? Did everybody click that share button? Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on. We're going to dive into the word. John chapter 5 verse 1. This is many of you. This is many of you. This is your situation. If you tell the truth tonight, this is your situation. All right. John chapter one. I'm sorry. John chapter five, verse one. It says, and after there was a feast of the Jews. After this was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And there in Jerusalem by the sheep market was a pool, uh, which was called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And in these laid a multitude of impotent folk. They were blind. They were halt. They were withered. They were waiting for the moving of the water. Mm -hmm. And while an angel had went down in a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. This is what happened. Whosoever 
then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease disease he had. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. And a certain man was there. Somebody shout, a certain man. <laughs> Come on, somebody shout, that certain man was me. Come on, hallelujah. If you don't want to say man, say woman. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And when Jesus had saw him lying there, he knew that he had been there for a long time in that case. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Hear God tonight. Verse seven. And the impotent man answered Jesus and said, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another person steps down before me. So has anybody been making excuses? Come on, we're going to be real tonight because this is your word. This is your word. H have you found yourself making excuses or feeling like other people are getting blessed and you're not getting blessed? H have you, have you, have lately, have you been, okay, there's the hearts. Okay, there's the confirmation. All right. This is your word. Verse eight says, and Jesus said unto him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. And took up his bed and walked. And the same day was the Sabbath. Verse 10. And the Jews therefore had said unto him. That was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. So wait a minute. The Jews looked at the man and said. Wait a minute. How, how, you, how you carrying your bed? Hold on. It's the Sabbath. Verse 12. Then asked they him. What, what man is it that said unto you, take up your bed and walk? So now the Jews are asking the lame man that got healed. They said, wait a minute, who told you this? Woo, glory to God, I feel healing tonight. Who, who told you to take up your bed and walk? Come on, verse 13. And he that was healed, amen, said not who it was. Mm. For Jesus had conveyed himself away. So Jesus had went away. And a multitude began being in that place. So Jesus went away and the place got filled up. And after Jesus had found him in the temple. So now Jesus went to look for the man that he had healed. And said unto him, behold, ooh, glory to God, thou art made whole. He said, sin no more, lest a worse thing shall come upon you. Glory to God. That's what God is saying on tonight. Hallelujah. He's saying, hey, glory to God, that many of you have been feeling like the man that was at the side of the pool for 38 years, for a long time. Glory to God. And if you, if you just tell the truth tonight so that we can shame the devil together, God, amen, is going to turn that situation around this year. No longer will you feel like that man. You know, that, that when the water is troubled, when miracles are happening and somebody else is being blessed and you're sitting on the side and saying, woe is me. Woo, hallelujah. God says, no longer will you say, woe is me. It's about to be your time. Hey, glory to God. And it's about to be your season. Hallelujah. Because God, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I hear you. God, amen, is releasing his favor upon you now. Just as he did the man at the side of the pool. He said, listen, wilt thou be made whole? It's time for you to be made whole, Sister Kashina. He, he said, hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Latoya says, I've been feeling like that sometimes. Listen, it's time to be made whole, says God. He said, I have to heal you completely now, not partially and, and not the way that you want me to heal you. But God says this time, hey, I'm going to heal you completely. Just like I healed the man at the side of the pool of Bethesda. See, see glory to God. That man thought that he was going to go into year 39. See, the man, the lame man at the side of the pool, the certain man, he thought he was going to go into another year, Sister Kamaya, with the same thing. See that? The Bible says for 38 years, come on. And he just made another excuse. Ooh. Come on. Is that anybody tonight? Just today or yesterday you made an excuse. Come on. You, you made an excuse. Glory to God. The Lord. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. God says, I'm coming to heal you tonight so that you don't have to make any more excuses. Woo. So that you can become, hallelujah, what it is that God has created you to become. 
Come on, so that you can walk in the fullness of Christ now. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. No more excuses. That's right. Hallelujah. No more excuses why you can't do this and why you can't do that. God says, listen, hallelujah. Stop saying you don't have this degree. Stop saying you don't have this amount of money. Stop saying you don't have this amount of prestige. Stop saying don't nobody know who I am. How many of you know God? Hey, hallelujah. Is about to make your name known. All because his favor is about to rest on your life. Who am I? talking to on tonight in the name of Jesus. Hey, glory. That's why God said the seed of 38, the seed of 38 is getting ready to shift your life. Come on here. Cause for 38 years, this man was lame for 38 years. This man was disabled. Hallelujah. But the cycle was destroyed. The moment that he obeyed God, hallelujah. When Jesus told him, take up your bed and walk, get up, get up, get up, get up. Hallelujah. Get up, get up, get up, get up. It's time to get up now. Hallelujah. Jesus said, get up. And that's just like some of you, you might be in your bed. Get up. Come on. You might be sitting in a chair. God said, get up. Oh, hallelujah. In your spirit, you might be be down. But God said, now I want you to get up. I need you to rise now. I need you to get up. I need you to get up. And when you get up, I need you to take up that comfortable place. I need you to take up that bed of affliction. Come on, because the man laid on that bed. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, glory to God, that was his comfortable place. That's why Jesus told him, listen, listen, you can't lay here no more. Woo! You can't stay in this place that you're in anymore. Come on, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Oh, who am I talking to this morning? God said, you can't stay in this place no more. You got to come out in the name of Jesus. He said, you can't stay in this place no more with your mindset being defeated. Because God is giving you favor and the victory. Hey, come on. He's giving you favor and the victory. Come on here. Hallelujah. Seven people done dropped. You know why they dropped? Amen. Because God said there's a seed amount of 38. Come on. If people don't want to seed into their future. Come on. People don't want to seed into their future. They don't want to give nothing, but they want God to give them everything. How many of you know this is the year? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, where you should no longer. Hallelujah. Disobey God, but you shall obey him. Come on, because there's more fruit that's getting ready to come on your tree. Come on, because people, yes, God, I hear you. The Lord says, those of you that obey him, even tonight with the seed of 38, the Lord says, there's going to be people that are getting ready to eat off of your tree. God is getting ready. Hey, I hear you, God. He's about to give you more fruit on your tree, Michelle. Hallelujah. He's about to give you more substance so that you can give to others. Come on. You are about to be the storehouse, say the Lord. Oh, you're about to be the storehouse where people are going to come to your house and eat. Come on. They're going to come to you and eat. Come on. They, hey, God, I feel a release right here because some of you want to be the storehouse. Some of you want to be the blessing. Come on, some of you always desire to be the blessed. Come on, because you know what it's like to be in need. Hey, glory, you know what it's like to not have. Come on, you know what it's like to ask somebody and they say no. Come on, somebody, you know, glory to God. Hallelujah, what it feels like to not have. My Lord, Anne says, my, my, my. Come on, so God is getting ready to flip the script. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. KD says, I can't sow. Amen, glory to God today, but... Amen. I will be the last time that I say that. Come on in Jesus name. That's right. Woman of God. Hallelujah. Let this be the last time. Glory to God, because God said he gives seed unto the sower. Amen. And bread to those who are hungry and water to those who are thirsty in the name of Jesus. Come on. There are many of you that are going to have seed to sow the next time. Come on. Hey, glory to God. You're going to be able to plant into the kingdom of God so that God, amen, can prosper you. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. So that God, amen, can spring up some things in your life. Who am I talking to? In the name of Jesus, you are about to be the one. Oh, glory to God that is about to bless so many others. And I see in the realm of the spirit, there are two of you. Amen. And if somebody can sow for Sister KD, amen, sow that seed of 38 for Sister KD. Amen. Because there's a miracle with her name on it. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. There's a miracle, amen, with Sister KD's name on it. Amen. So if somebody can sow for KD, just find her name right there and just 
say, I'll sow for you, woman of God, in the name of Jesus, because there's a miracle with her name on it. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And this miracle, amen, is going to break forth so many things for KD, because I see years of struggle. Hey, God is showing me. God bless you, Prophet um, Marco, on tonight. I see many years of struggle. Hallelujah. I see many years of struggle, even in your mindset. Ooh, Jesus have mercy. Ah, glory. I see, I see years of struggle, KD. Amen. So you need to get the seed in the ground. Can somebody sow for her? Come on, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even as you're sowing for her, make sure you get your seed in the ground as well. Glory to God. Glory to God. Evandis Arlene says, I will sow for her. See, there's a double blessing right there. Because Evandis Arlene done released her 38 seed. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Watch what God does for you, Evangelist Arlene. Watch how the Lord continues. Hey, I hear your Holy Ghost. Watch how God continues to open doors of favor for you, Evangelist Arlene. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say it to even tell you, Evangelist Arlene, that God is giving you back your joy. Ha! Huh. He says, hey, glory. He says, joy unspeakable. Woo! You are about to smile again. You're about to dance again. Said the Lord. He says, I'm restoring back your joy for the enemy has been fighting you to take away your joy. My God. But God says, even now, Evangelist Arlene, as you are sowing for the woman of God, and even those of you that are getting ready to plant your seed, God says, get ready for restoration of joy. Woo! Get ready for restoration of peace. Oh, God, I hear you tonight. It's a night of the prophetic. We flowing in the Holy Ghost. I didn't even get to what's on this paper, y'all. I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, I didn't get here yet. Glory, 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 glory. But we thank God for the moving of his spirit. Hallelujah. We thank God for his anointing. We thank God for the fire of God tonight. Hey, that is destroying the works of Satan even now. Hallelujah. Because many of you, your mindsets tonight were very heavy. Your mindset was very heavy tonight. You had so many things that was consuming your mind and consuming your thoughts. But I hear the spirit of the Lord, hey, glory, saying even now, I see you hitting those hearts, Sister Latoya, that God is regulating your mind now. Hallelujah. To the obedience of Christ again. I hear the Lord saying again, for the enemy, A, hey, is tempting you, Sister Latoya. But I hear the, the spirit of the Lord saying to tell you that he has delivered you. 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 Hey, he has delivered you. Oh my God, Sister Latoya, he has delivered you. Stay delivered. Woo. Glory to God. Shut your ear gate to the enemy. Yes, Father, I hear you. He said for me to tell you, Latoya, shut your ear gate to the enemy. Turn off every device, everything that the enemy can even come through. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. God says for three days, even while we're on this consecration, Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, Shatan Baha. For three days, Sister Latoya. Hallelujah. God says, quiet your spirit. Be very, very quiet and be very, very vigilant. In other words, be very watchful, but be very quiet. My God, tonight. Hallelujah. He said, hey, Shatan Baha. He said, tell my daughter Latoya. Yes, God, I hear you. I'm going to be obedient and say this to you. God says, he has you covered. He has, hey, glory to God. As long as you stay in the will of the Father, as long as you remain obedient, Sister Latoya, he will continue to have you covered. My Lord, my Lord, follow the instructions of God. Three days, your ear gates. And I want you to do just like this as I'm doing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God's going to touch your ears. Hey, hallelujah. To only be able to hear what he wants you to hear in Jesus name. And if it's negative or if it's of the enemy, it won't even come near your ear gate. Woo! In the name of Jesus, my God, my God, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Follow the instructions of the Lord. Amen. Sister Latoya in the name of Jesus, my God, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Sister KD, when God releases, amen, that miracle, I want you to inbox me. Amen. As a woman of God has sown for you that seed of 38. Woo. Hallelujah. You're going to see God turn some things around. Amen. From your past. Glory to God. Those things that used to play your mind are no longer going to play your plague your mind. The Lord says, even now as the seed was sown on your behalf, Sister KD, amen. The Lord says many cycles, um, generational cycles from mental trauma. Hallelujah. Have 
been delivered. You have been delivered, amen, from mental trauma. God bless you, Dominique. You have been delivered from mental trauma, but this is from the family. This is from the bloodline. Hallelujah. And sometimes you look at your family, you like, y'all all crazy. Uh, listen, that's what I hear the Spirit of the Lord say. Sometimes you just look and you're like, I don't feel like dealing with you. I don't feel like dealing with you. You got a problem and you got a problem. You find yourself saying that sometimes. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying he has delivered you. Hey, glory to God from that curse. Hallelujah. In your bloodline, God has delivered you mentally tonight. Hey, in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God some praise for her deliverance. Come on. Hallelujah. One seed of, oh God, of obedience. Glory to God can break a generational curse. Mm. Hallelujah. Who I feel God moving right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come against arthritis in the name of Jesus. There are five of you on this live. Amen. You deal with the, with our arthritis, even in the times of cold. Amen. When the weather shifts, you deal with arthritis. Amen. We come against that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I pray right now and I speak right now that healing will go into your bones in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, and drive out that spirit of arthritis. You don't need no more pain medicine. Hey, Shatanda Baha, you don't need no more pain medicine. You're trying to find something, hallelujah, to come against the, the pain of the arthritis. Oh, God says tonight he's healing you in the name of Jesus, my God. He's driving out. Yes, Lord, I hear you. He's driving out the arthritis in the name of Jesus. And you shall no longer say, oh, I think that's my arthritis. I think I have arthritis in my back. Some of you have been, you've been claiming it in certain places in your body. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying tonight, decree and declare over yourself that you do not have arthritis, that your bones are healed, that your body is healed in the name of Jesus. Hey, glory to God, for God is healing you even now, Shanta, in the name of Jesus. You shall feel, hallelujah, even a warm sensation over your body. You shall feel, hallelujah, the Lord touch you even now in the name of Jesus in the areas where the pain used to be. Somebody shout, it used to be there. It's not there no more. Woo, glory. Come on, somebody shout, it used to be there. It's not there anymore. Hey, hallelujah. It used to be there, but it's not there. It's not there. <laughs> hey, I just felt it leave your body. Glory to God. It's not there anymore, Yvonne. Hallelujah. You're going to go to look for it, and it's not there. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The things that you desired to be. You said, I always want to be healed. Oh, no. You're saying tonight I am healed. Oh, glory to God in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been saying, why is it that everybody else is getting touched here? Everybody else is getting healed. The Father says tonight he's healing you. Hey. Hallelujah. Cynthia says, no pain. Come on, Zion. God is healing even now. And I promise you, when she got on the broadcast, she probably had pain. But God delivered her even from the pain in the name of Jesus. Woo, glory, glory, glory. He is Jehovah Rapha. Amen. The Lord that healeth thee. I said, Jesus is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that healeth thee. I said, Jesus is Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that healeth thee. Come on, somebody. Praise God for your healing. Praise God for your deliverance. Come on, praise God, hallelujah, for the manifestation of his power. Come on, praise God, hallelujah, for the touch tonight. Come on, praise God um, that he saw fit to touch you. He saw fit to heal you. Oh, my God, in the name of Jesus, the fire of God is on this broadcast. The fire of God, hey, is on this broadcast. I said the fire of God is on YouTube. The fire of God is on Instagram. The fire of God is on Facebook Live. The fire of God is here tonight to burn up every infirmity, to burn up every form of sickness, to burn up in the name of Jesus, that which is not supposed to be your portion. God says, I'm coming for it tonight. He said, hey, glory to God in the name of Jesus. Ooh, he says, I'm coming for that tonight. Yes, I'm coming for that tonight. Hallelujah. And I'm also releasing my favor upon you as I'm healing your body in the name of Jesus. He said, tell my people tonight, not only am I healing you, I'm releasing my favor upon you. Some of you are going to go and apply for the job and you're going to get it now. Some of you are going to apply for the apartment, you're going to get it now. Some of you are going to apply for the house, you're going to get it now. Some of you are going to apply, hallelujah, for that which you got denied in 2021. 
done. God says you're going to get approved for it now. He said, because as I'm healing you, my God, I'm releasing my favor upon you too. He says a double blessing is being released on this morning. He says a double blessing. Come on, somebody lift your hands and receive it. Hallelujah. Come on, a double blessing is being released even now. The healing power of God and the favor of God. Somebody shout, I take it, 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 I take it. I take it. I take it for me and for my children. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I take it. Hey, glory to God. I'll take it. Yes, Lord, I'll take the favor. I'll take, hey, glory, I'll take the healing. Come on, say it out of your mouth so that you can receive this double blessing. Come on, say it out of your mouth. There's a breaking in the spirit. My God, as you say it, you're going to feel the healing power of God. As you say it, hallelujah, you're going to feel God touching you, my Lord. As you say it, you're going to know that heaven is opening up on your behalf so now when you go to apply by faith you're going to know that the favor of God has gone before you now when you go to apply by faith you're going to know that favor has gone before you I'm going to say it one more time glory to God now when you go and apply because see fear is gone Come on here. When we walk by faith, fear has no place. Hey, did you hear me in the Holy Ghost? When we walk by faith, people of God, fear has no place. Come on. See, fear brings torment. Come on, fear brings doubt. But God says, even now, hey, as he is increasing your faith in him, even through this word, glory to God. Hallelujah. Even through this word, God says, I'm increasing your faith even now. So when you go to the dealership, when you go to the real estate office, when you call that person, hallelujah, they're going to tell you now, yes, we have an opening. Woo, glory, hallelujah. What we desire for you to come in. When can you come in? Mm. When, when can you come in? And some of you, are, yes, Lord, I hear you. Some of you are going to hear, okay, well, what can you put down? We have an amount that we need you to put down, but what can you put down? And you say, well, I only have $50. They're going to say, okay, we take that. They're going to say, we really wanted $1,000, but we'll take what it is that you have. <laughs> come on. Many of you are going to come back and testify. Hey, to the glory of God. Because the word has been spoken. Mm-hmm. The word has been spoken. I said the word. Hey, Shatanda Baha. The word has been spoken. Come on. All you got to do is receive it. In Jesus' name, it will happen. Hallelujah. It will happen. Let me, hey, glory. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, amen. There's five of you, amen, that need to share this broadcast. Amen. There's 10 of you that get that need to get your seed of 38 in the ground. Amen. Get your seed of 38 in the ground and watch God move on your behalf. Amen. Come on. It's not going to take long. Watch God move on your behalf because of your obedience. Amen to his voice. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord said for me to tell you all, remember, amen, that faith without works is dead. And he gave me James chapter two, verse 14 through 26. We're not going to read it for the sake of time, but there is a couple of scriptures. There are a couple of scriptures that I have to touch on tonight. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mm, glory to God. God is still yet moving mightily by his spirit. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, amen, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise God. Amen. Another word for liberty is what? Freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Somebody shout, I feel free right now. Come on. This is a free atmosphere where his anointing is. Glory to God. Catch the revelation because he's here. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is here. Hey, glory to God. His anointing is here. His peace is here. Come on. Some of you feel so peaceful right now. Glory to God, because the peace of God is here. Hallelujah. And we bless him tonight. Amen. We bless God tonight. Come on. Let's give the Lord. Hallelujah. A hand clap of praise tonight. Let's thank God for the moving of his spirit. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for his anointing. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Amen. We're going to read James chapter two. We're going to, um, and it is 14 through, 
um, 26, but I'm not going to read all of it. There's a certain part that I want to read here. And I want you to catch this. It all ties in. Evangelist says, I feel free. Amen. 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 Michelle says, thank you, Father, for peace. Come on. Amen. You feel the peace of God, Michelle? Amen. We bless God. We bless him. Amen. Mm. God is so good. He is so good. And he's so mindful of us. Let's start reading at 14 and I'm going to skip down. Amen. It says, what does it profit, my brethren? Though a man says that he has faith and has not works. Whew. Can faith save him? Verse 15. If a brother or a sister be naked and desolate of daily food. And one says to them, depart in peace. Go and be warm and be filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which they have need of to the body. What does it profit? Let's stay right there. Let's stop right here for a minute. So God is saying, even in this, the Lord is breaking it down and he's letting us know. He says, listen, if a person comes to you, a brother or a sister, and they are naked, they have no clothes, they have nothing to wear, or better yet, they are desolate for food. They need food. And you say to them, depart in peace. Go and be warm. Go and be filled. Your belly. Right? He said, what does it profit that person? Nothing. Because you did not help them. Come on, you did not help them. See, see, faith without works is dead. We're going to break it down a little bit deeper in just a second. But this is good right here. Because 17 says, even so faith, if it has not works... It is dead being alone. So a lot of times when we say we have faith in God or we trust in God or we believe in God, catch the revelation. If you're not using it, if you're not using your faith and works together, then there's no manifestation, right? Let's read it one more time. Even so faith, uh-huh. If it does not have works, it is dead. So just imagine a person who's saved and they say they believe God all the time. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. But then when the test comes, they don't believe God. But then when someone comes and they're in need, they say, no, just go, go in peace. You're going to find food. You're going to find shelter. It's going to be okay. God's going to bless you. You don't have faith. In other words, the Bible is saying, listen, faith without works is dead. So as we have faith, we have to have works along with it. Come on, somebody's catching this. It all ties in. I need somebody to write in the comments. It all ties in. Verse 18 says, yes, a man may say that thou hast faith and I have works. So he says, well, show me thy faith without your works. And I will show you thee. I will show thee my faith by my works. See that? See the difference? We can say we have faith, right? Right, Evangelist Arlene? Come on, because she even sold for the woman of God by faith. Everything we do is by faith in God. Faith in God is 100% trust in God. It's very simple. So when the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, what? Acknowledge him. That means to acknowledge God and he will direct your path, right? Amen. So when God says trust in him, that means have faith in him completely. I'm going to do some teachings on it in just, in just a little while. Probably in a couple of weeks, we'll be on Zoom for Bible study. And I'm going to teach on faith. Amen. Because a lot of times, amen, people believe they have faith, but it's not until the test comes. It's not until the rubber meets the road. Amen. That your faith it is tried. Your faith is tested. Come on. Somebody may say, well, how, how is my faith tested? It is. It is because you see what happens here. A person comes to you in need, but you don't help them. You say, go ahead, go ahead. You, you're going to be warm some way, somehow. Your belly going to get filled some way, somehow. And, and what does the Bible say? You have not done what was needful to the body. You have not given them what was needful to them. So what does it profit? Nothing. Amen. Come on. And then we skip down to 18 and then we skip down to 19. 19 says that thou believest that there is one God and thou doest well. But listen to this. The devils also believe. Uh-oh. It says the devils with an S on it. <laughs> 
the devils also believe and tremble. So the, the devils know about faith. The, the devils, let's read it right here. It's verse 19. Did y'all read it? It says, thou believest that there is one God. So the devils even believe that there is one God. They even know. Come on. And that thou doest well. They even know that God does well. <laughs> Come on. Right? It says the devils also believe and tremble. So the devils are also fearful of one God. The God. True and living God. Jesus himself. It's right here. Verse 20 says, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Another interpretation means foolish. All right. It's saying, wait a minute. Oh, foolish man. Do you know? Do you not know that faith without works is dead? Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Some of you know the story. Amen. When Abraham offered his son. Amen. God told him to go up to the mountain. Amen. And offer his son. Amen. As a sacrifice. Amen. And Abraham did just exactly what God told him to do. Come on. And then God, hallelujah, there appeared in the thicket, which was a bush. Amen. A ram in the bush. And so we know that as Abraham had obeyed God, amen, he saw the hand of God, but it was by his faith. Come on, because Abraham could have said, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sacrifice my son. That makes no sense, God. But Abraham, what? Obeyed God. Can somebody write that in the comments? Come on. Can you write that in the comments tonight? Come on. Abraham obeyed God by faith. Come on. Verse 22. Seeing that thou has faith wrought with, with his works and by works was faith made perfect. Verse 23, and the scriptures was fulfilled saying that Abraham believed God. Y'all with me in 23? Come on, let's read that again. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. All right. And he was called what? The friend of God. That's where that comes from because Abraham trusted God. Come on, he obeyed God. So he was also called in the Old Testament the friend of God. In verse 24, it says, see, it says, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Amen. So we are justified by our works, people of God. Amen. When God tells us to do something and we do it, we are justified just by that. Let's continue to read 25. It says, likewise, also, was not uh, Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the message, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Some of you may know, amen, that Rahab the harlot, um, when there was a war going on, amen, Rahab was in the midst of the prophets. And so when she was in the midst of the prophets, she saw and God had revealed to her that the enemies were coming. So she warned the prophets. Come on, she was a whore. Rahab the harlot. She was a whore, but God still used her. But he used her by faith. What did she do? She warned them. Amen. She gave them messages. She was the messenger to them that the enemies were coming. Y'all catching this? So because of that, amen, the prophets were saved. Come on. Do you know one act of obedience by faith you can help save somebody's life? Okay. Faith without works is what? Dead. <laughs> Come on here. Amen. 26 in closing. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead. Oh, that's deep right there. That's deep. Hey, glory. That's deep right there. It says, for the body without the spirit is dead. Do you know when we die and we take our last breath? Your spirit departs from your body. I'll teach it another time. This is why when you when you go to someone's funeral, they're no longer there. They're not in the, the body. Their spirit has departed. Okay, let's read it again. For as the body without the spirit is dead, it's just a corpse. It's just that person's body, their shell, but their spirit has left. Their spirit has gone with God. Okay? 
So let's continue to read. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Great revelation. So every time, amen, that God wants you to exercise your faith, make sure that you put the works with it. Whatever he's telling you to do, make sure that you do it. Amen. And make sure that you do it well. Hallelujah. Because it's a new year. Amen. And in closing, I'm, I'm almost done. It's a new year. Hallelujah. And so what that means is let's walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Let's not walk um, according to what we see, but let's walk according to what we know. What has God spoken to you? What has God spoken over you? What has God said to you concerning your life, concerning your purpose, concerning your destiny? Amen. Because that's what you believe God for by faith. Amen. What the father has spoken over you. So we're going to go from wanting to become it to now what? Becoming it. Right. And God says, now is the time to put it in action, says the Lord. Oh, this is good. He said, you shall see manifestation. He said, and when your heart gets weary, oh God, here it is right here. He said, think on these things. And he gave me Philippians chapter four. And this is our last scripture tonight. Amen. God says, as your heart may become weary, listen to this and be encouraged tonight. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read Philippians chapter four. Y'all bear with me for a minute here. Woo, glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Okay, y'all bear with me for a minute. I know it's right here. Galatians, Ephesians. Uh-huh. Come on, Jesus. All right, after Ephesians is Philippians. Amen. I know I know where my word is. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4. Let's start reading at verse 6. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, What? Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Did y'all catch that? Instagram, YouTube, Facebook Live. Did y'all catch that? When your heart becomes weary, God says, as you put it in action, as you allow the works to go with your faith now, he said, your heart may become a little weary. He said, and when your heart becomes weary, focus on Philippians chapter four, verse six through nine. And I'm going to read it. It says, be careful for nothing. So be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 17, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 18, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, come on, whatsoever things are honest, come on, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, God says, think on these things. Amen. 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 Focus on Philippians chapter four, verse six to nine. When you become weary. Amen. When you become weary and Galatians chapter six, verse nine says, be not weary in well doing. Hallelujah. For in due season, oh, glory to God, you shall reap if you don't faint. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Amen. We thank God for the moving of his spirit on tonight. We thank God for his word. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I thank God for lifting the burdens. Amen. And the weights off of many of you on tonight. Truly, there has been a release. Amen. Truly, hallelujah, the spirit of the Lord has spoken on tonight. Truly, God has come to encourage the hearts of his people once again. Glory to God. So those of you, amen, that the Lord has touched tonight, those of you, amen, that even desire to sow into our ministry, amen, we have four ways that you can sow. The information is at the bottom of the screen. And once again, your seed goes to our ministry. Amen. It goes to PIPW ministry. It does not come to me. Amen. But it goes straight to our ministry. Do you hear me? Hallelujah. So be a blessing. Amen. To PIPW ministry as this ministry has blessed you once again. The ministry cash app is money sign. 
P-I-P-W ministry. And make sure that it's a pink flyer there because there is another ministry similar to ours and it doesn't have a pink flyer. We have the pink flyer, all right? So make sure if you're sewing on Cash App, the pink flyer is there. Amen. Also, we you can sew on paypal.me slash prophetic impact. Once again, paypal.me slash prophetic impact. And get your seed of 38 in the ground, amen, or close to it, all right? Whatever the Lord places upon your heart, you may want to sow more than 38, amen? God may place on your heart to sow 138, 238, amen? Whatever God places on your heart, be obedient to the Spirit of the Lord and watch manifestation happen in your life, amen? We also have a ministry website, which is www.propheticimpact1000.com. Once again, our ministry website is www.propheticimpact1000.com. Amen. And you can go on our website and you can also purchase our products. We do have prayer journals. I have some right here. We have our Fresh Fire prayer journal. For those of you that like to write, listen, get your prayer journal. It's a new year. Amen. Get your Fresh Fire prayer journal. All right. And it says, Fresh Fire Revival, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. All right, go to our website and you click on the bundle package. You would get this, you would get this, and a ministry pen. All right, you would get a small bottle of oil, as well as a prayer journal and a ministry pen. That is our bundle package, all right? And that's only $30. Amen. We have not changed the price for that. But go ahead and get your uh, prayer journal and your small bottle blessing or to oil. We will also send you a ministry pen to go along with it. Glory to God. We also have prayer shawls on our website. Once again, the website is www.propheticimpact1000.com. We also have prophetic counseling. I do prophetic counseling and that is one hour. Amen. With you and I and of course the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that is also on our website as well. If you click on shop. Um, you'll see all the products that we have there. Amen. Glory to God. We also have the large bottle of blessed anointed oil. Um, and this large bottle is 40. Amen. And the small bottle is 30. Amen. Once again, our prices are 40 and 30 for the blessed anointed oil. Listen, I encourage you in this new year to get you a bottle of blessed anointed oil, large or small. Amen. Come on. You need blessed anointed oil. Anoint your home. If you've never anointed your home, um, you need to anoint your home. If you've already anointed your home years ago, re-anoint your home. In Jesus' name, amen. This oil works, people of God. Amen. Also, um, I do want to say, amen, we have our physical church building here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and the address is 3670 um, Baston Lane. Amen. Our services are every Sunday at 2 p.m. You don't want to miss Amen. Fellowship with PIPW ministry. Truly, the spirit of the Lord is in that place. Amen. God dwells here in this ministry. So come on out and fellowship with us every Sunday at 2 p.m. Um, also, if you don't have a church home, amen, and you desire to fellowship with us, you're more than welcome to come. If you do have a church home, you still can come and fellowship with us in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you that don't have a church home for membership, and you desire to be covered, you need a pastor. Amen. This is an international ministry. I pastor people all over the globe, literally. When I tell you all, I pastor people in Florida, in Atlanta. I have members in California. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And they've been a part of this ministry for years and they love it. Glory to God. So if you don't have a church home and you desire to um, join a ministry, you can join this ministry. It's very easy. You will send an email to PIPWMinistry2 at gmail.com. Once again, if you desire to become a member here at PIPW Ministry, you will send an email and very short and to the point, you will say, I would love to be a member of Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. All right, you send that email, our secretary will get back to you with a welcome letter. It's just that easy. Amen. And you will be a part of the family in Jesus name. Also, for those of you that have a church home, but you just love this ministry and you say, you know what, Apostle, every time I'm on, I'm blessed. Every time I tune in, I'm blessed. But I have a church. You can become a covenant partner. Amen. You can become a covenant partner with us in Jesus name. Amen. And a covenant partner is one who has a church home, but they just love this ministry. And so you would connect with us. 
um, by way of email the same way. You will send an email to PIPW Ministry 2. And in that email, you will say, I desire to be a covenant partner with Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. And we, you will receive a welcome letter um, becoming a covenant partner. Now, a covenant partner is one who sows a monthly seed into the ministry. Amen. Your seed keeps you connected to God and to the ministry. Hear me and hear me well. Amen. Your seed keeps you connected in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I'm going to say it again. Your monthly seed is what keeps you connected. All right. And so, yes, as you desire to join as a covenant partner, you send the email. We send you a welcome letter to become a covenant partner. We welcome you to be a covenant partner in Jesus name. We have many covenant partners. Amen. That love this ministry that have joined years ago and they are still covenant partners with PIPW ministry. Listen, it has been wonderful tonight. I'm so filled up and I got to get some rest. Amen. Cause Sabrina's party is later today. I want to say thank you all for the birthday shout outs for my daughter. She's a teenager now, which I cannot believe. Glory to God. But I want to share a quick testimony for the 22 of you that are still here. Um, the doctor said that Sabrina would not live. And then when they found out that she was still living inside of me because she was supposed to die inside of me because she had a mass of tissue over her left lung that had began to grow so big that it was pushing her heart over to the left side. And so with the ultrasounds, it was showing, thank you, Sister Yvonne, it was showing that her heart was being pushed all the way over to the side of her rib cage. And so I had 3D pictures um, of her ultrasounds where her heart is literally beating. So, so this is her body. This is her rib cage. You got the left and the right. And of course, my way is, is backwards. So of course, right and left. Amen. And so her heart was all the way over here. And it was just beating. It was just beating on the ultrasound. And you had a or you had the rest of her organs. You had her lungs, you know, and you had a, um, her heart. But her heart, the heart was pushing. Um, it was pushed all the way over to the to the side. So where the heart was supposed to be in the middle, which our heart is right here in the middle, her heart was pushed all the way over. So the mass of tissue was that big and the doctors could not understand why her heart was still beating. But I know why her heart was still beating. Amen. <laughs> because God is a healer and God wanted my daughter to be here. Come on, somebody. Amen. And she is a miracle. Hallelujah. And I can add to her testimony because they said that she'll never make it to. Let me see. Hold on. After they, after they found out that, yes, she was going to live, I wound up carrying her full term. And that's when they saw that the mass of tissue had left before they did the C-section. Right. That was a miracle at CHOP Hospital. And it is recorded. Amen. At Children's Hospital in Philadelphia with Dr. Frank. So it is recorded, it's documented, amen, that Sabrina no longer had the mass of tissue and that they did not have to do surgery, that they didn't have to, you know, cut me open and do surgery on her and put her back inside of me because that's what they wanted to do. And I told the doctors no, because there was a 75% chance that she was going to die. And I told the doctors, no, mm -mm. I said, if God let me carry her for seven months, eight months, no, there's no need for you to cut my stomach open, take her halfway out, do a surgery and put her back. I said, no, amen. Come on, somebody. I was believing God by faith. Hallelujah. And now my daughter is 13 years old. Amen. They said that she would not be able to breathe. They said she would have bronchitis for the rest of her life. My daughter is breathing well. Amen. To God be the glory. Do you hear me? Amen. No breathing complications to God be the glory. Hallelujah. You see Sabrina, you don't see her breathing crazy and breathing hard. Uh-uh. God has healed her completely. Now let me add to the testimony. They said she'll never be able to do sports. Come on. Hallelujah. They gave her so many restrictions as they kept seeing her grow. They said she'll never be able to do sports. I believe it was at the age of two. They said she'll never be able to run a long distance. Y'all see my daughter in basketball, right? <laughs> Listen, and before basketball, she was in volleyball. I said, devil, you a liar. Come on here. Hallelujah. And God is the truth. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Can I just get three people to rejoice with me right there for Sabrina and for her life? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I thank God for her. There's another testimony I can share about her, and I'm going to share it because somebody needs to hear this. 
Amen. So I have an aunt, my oldest aunt. I'm not going to say her name for the sake of privacy. But my oldest aunt, when I had Sabrina, she had to be about maybe seven or eight months old. And I remember my aunt had called me and she was like, Carmen, she said, um, I want to see the baby. She would just come by, you know, to see Sabrina um, in the salon when I was doing hair. She would just come by the house. So she came by for about a month, you know, like back to back to back. I would see her like once a week, sometimes twice a week, not knowing what was going on. And so, yes, she would come to see Sabrina. And so I remember, amen, she had called me and she said, I just want to keep her overnight. Can I keep her? And I said, well, you know, auntie, I'm not going to say her name. I said, I, I said to my aunt, I said, I'm, I'm very cautious about my children spending the night, you know, at people's houses. I said, um, I don't think so. And immediately the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, yes. And so I called my aunt back and I said, you know what? I said, you can, you can have her overnight. I said, what time do you want her to be ready? I have her ready with her bag. And sure enough, my aunt came to get her that night. She wound up keeping Sabrina for two days. But here's the, here's the testimony. I didn't know that my aunt was sick. Listen, I did not know that my aunt was sick. She didn't tell me until a month later when the doctor cleared her. I feel like taking another sprint, y'all. You don't understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you hear me, people of God? When, when my aunt got cleared from the doctors, that's when she told me that she had gotten healed. Nobody knew that when I had my daughter and I came home with her because I had a C-section, so when you have a C-section, you come home five days later. I came home to a house that had no heat because I had oil heat. And the tank um, didn't have no oil in it. And she was born January the 5th. So it was very cold that day. And when I went in the hospital, it was just a little bit of oil. I didn't get the oil put in the tank. Long story short. So when I came home, I went to flick on the heat. There was no heat. Listen, I went up in the room and I had Sabrina bundled up. This is when I brought her home. And I remember um, the Lord said, get the oil. I got my oil now. It's cold in the house now. I'm bundled up. She's bundled up. I just brought her home. Listen to the story, y'all. And I grabbed the oil. When I grabbed the oil, God said, anoint her. He said, unwrap her and anoint her. And I said, yes, Lord. Now she's laying on the bed. I start unwrapping her. Taking off her sleeper, taking off her blankets, you know, taking off everything. And I'm like, ooh, it's cold in here. And immediately, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit said, anoint her. So I began to anoint her head. I took her and I anointed her arms. I anointed her hands. I anointed her feet. And I anointed her legs. And then I turned her halfway over and I anointed her back. As I'm anointing my baby, glory to God, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And God said to me, he said, I'm going to use her to heal my people. He said, the hey, Shatanda Baha. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He said, there's a healing anointing. Come on here. I'm sharing this to testify so that somebody can give God praise for a child that the devil tried to kill in the womb. I don't think you hear me. Hey, glory to God. But because there was purpose. <sighs> mm. I got 25 people looking at me and ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now you can understand my praise. Hey, glory to God. Now you can understand my worship. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I said now, amen, you, you could probably understand my praise. Hey, now you can understand my worship. Glory to God. And so when I begin to anoint her, here, here's the deep part right here, saints. As I begin to anoint her and God began to speak to me, as he was speaking to me, Sister Kamaya, listen, I was saying it out of my mouth. Everything he said, hey, glory to God. Everything he said to me, I'm saying it out of my mouth over her as I'm anointing her. I said, you shall be, you shall be a healer to God's people. God's going to use you to heal his people in the name of Jesus. And as I'm anointing her, hallelujah, glory to God with the oil, Evangelist Arlene. Glory to God as I'm anointing her. I'm speaking it out of my mouth. Now I feel, glory to God, the power of God coming to my room. Now I feel, hey, glory, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit just, just take over. And I became so weak. Listen, I was getting ready to go out in the spirit. My hands lifted to God. I'm telling y'all the truth. 
I'm getting ready to go out in the spirit. The Holy Spirit is getting ready to slay me. And I felt it. I took the blanket and I laid it over her. Come on here. Hallelujah. When I laid the blanket over her, the Holy Spirit knocked me out on my floor. Now, mind you, it's cold. I wasn't even thinking about that. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm out in the spirit. And God is showing me my daughter. Hey, he's showing me her at the age of two. He's showing me her at the age of five. It's flashing before me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God began to show me my daughter. Why? Because the doctors were still speaking death over her. They were still telling me that she ain't going to make it much longer. That They kept telling me this is going to happen to her and that is going to happen to her. And God was showing me my daughter. Hallelujah. Even in open visions. To the point to where how her hair was going to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and the clothes that she was going to wear. And so when it began to happen, Sister Latoya, I said, wait a minute. I saw this. When you were born, Sabrina, hold on. The Lord showed me with you with two, two long ponytails. Glory to God. The Lord showed me with you with these pink sneakers on and the jacket to match. Come on, somebody. And so, hey, glory to God. As this began to happen, saints. God was encouraging my heart. He said, I showed you and I told you that she was going to live. Hmm. Listen, I was out for almost five hours in the spirit. Slain. Slain. Completely. When I woke up, it was dark. I got home with Sabrina and it was daylight. When I woke up and I got up off of that floor, now this is God. I'm telling y'all, this is God. She never cried. I didn't hear her crying because if I would have heard her crying, I would have came out of the spirit and I would have grabbed her. Almost five hours. I don't think y'all hear me. I looked at the time and I'm like, what time is it? Mind you, it's still cold in the house. But I didn't feel nothing. She didn't cry. <laughs> Come on here. I was able to find the heater. I had some plug up heaters. I was able to find the heater. Then the next day I was able to get some oil. <laughs> amen. For, for the heater. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the house, amen, became warm again. Listen, I hope that testimony encouraged somebody. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm no better than anyone else, but I love to testify about the goodness of Jesus. And all that he has done for me, for my children, for my family. Because just as God has done it for me, he's more than able to do it for you. But you got to believe by faith. Hallelujah. God took me through, amen, with my daughter because I had faith in God. When they told me I was going to lose her in the womb because of what she had over her lungs, I didn't sign that paper. I didn't sign it. The doctor kept saying that my maiden name is Bryant. So he kept saying, Miss Bryant, I don't think you understand. Like, this, she's going to die inside of you. So you need to sign this paper. I said, I'm not signing no contract. And that's what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, if you sign this paper, you are signing a death contract for the baby. And I told the doctors, no. I told the doctors, no. I said, I'm not signing that paper. I said, y'all gonna have to do whatever y'all gonna have to do. They said, okay, we'll come back in two weeks because the mass is going to grow. I said, all right, well, it's just going to grow. Okay. But I'm not signing that paper. I'm not agreeing with what you say. And in my mind, I kept saying, God, if you allow this baby to be in my womb, then it has to be purpose. Come on. I said, if, hey, Shatanda Baha, yes, Lord. I said, if you allow this baby to be in my womb, there has to be purpose. I don't know who the Holy Spirit is talking to tonight. It might be somebody that's going to watch this replay. Believe God by faith to heal. Believe God by faith to deliver. Believe God by faith to set you free by any means necessary. Whatever it takes, God is able to do it in Jesus name. I love you all. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed in Jesus' name. Listen, get your seed at 38 in the ground. It looks like three of you sold. Amen. Come on. Some of you need to put your seed in. Come on, put your seed in the ground. Amen. I'm going to close with the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
Father God, we thank you tonight. God bless you, Minister Adam. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless your holy name with hands lifted in the air. Father, we say thank you for your word on tonight, oh God. Thank you for increasing our faith in you, Father. Thank you for all that's been said and done in the name of Jesus. Father, we repent of our sins right now, God. Any sins that we have committed, anything we have done that was displeasing in your sight, Father, please forgive us now. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we thank you for the manifestation of your power tonight. We thank you for the manifestation of your glory. We thank you for your anointing that has come to destroy every yoke of the enemy even now in jesus mighty name father i thank you that your people have been drawn back to you on tonight it's by your love hallelujah it's by your power it's by your grace hallelujah that you have drawn your people back to you even the one who was not believing you oh god shall believe in you now in the mighty name of jesus that person that has been struggling oh god their faith shall be in you now Hallelujah, to turn this situation around in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you, and Father, we praise you. We bind the hand of the enemy now for no weapon that is formed against myself, my family, my children, no weapon that is formed against your people, oh God, all 26 people on this live, and even those that are going to view, even on YouTube and Instagram. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you that no weapon that is formed against us will be able to prosper every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned in jesus mighty name father bless every seed in the name of jesus god bless even their obedience hallelujah and sowing the seed increase your people i pray in jesus mighty name and even those who wanted to sow father that didn't have it to give oh god give them seed to sow Hallelujah. Father, I pray tonight that you give them seed to sow. Oh God, fill their cups and let it overflow even now. In Jesus' mighty name, that they will have more than enough. Glory to God to bless your kingdom and more than enough. Hallelujah. To be sustained in the name of Jesus. Father God, for this we say thank you and we bless your holy name. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. To God be the glory. Have a wonderful night, everyone. Shalom and shalom.